Usta Evans. Uh, I'll be here uh, giving the first hoopah, and also be uh, back uh, tomorrow night for the youth. Uh, we have a youth kiam uh, starting after Isha prayer. And also Saturday, he'll be back. Uh, he'll be having it in conjunction with Takwa Seminary, uh, starting at 10 a.m. all the way to 2, intensive uh, discussion and uh, uh, d discussion topic, inshallah. So inviting all the brothers and sisters to come and bring a family, and all can benefit and increase our knowledge, inshallah. Just call here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. In the past few nights, brothers and sisters, we have been going over the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about uh, what he would do after he would finish leading the prayer, what he would say, what he would do. And we've talked about a few things, just to do a quick review. We said that uh, there would be takbir out loud in the masjid that some of the Sahaba talked about. Uh, we talked about how after he would finish, he would say Astaghfirullah three times, or he would seek Allah's forgiveness three times. And we talked about how he would say Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dal jalal wa ikram. And how he encouraged us to say a dhikr ten times after Fajr and ten times after Maghrib before we change our position and before we speak to anybody. And tonight I'd like to share with you another thing that was part of his practice. And this is something that he would do, not something that he would say. This is something that he would do. And this is according to a hadith that is related by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. And it is also found in Sahih Muslim. Sunan of Abi Dawood, Ibn Majah, and Al Nasa'i, and it is a sound hadith. On the authority of Al Bara ibn Azib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Kunna ida salayna khalfa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ahbabna an nakuna an yaminihi, yukbilu alayna bi wajhihi. He said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that when he would, when, when we would, I'm sorry, he's a companion, so he's saying, when we would pray behind the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we loved to be on his right side. We loved to be on his right side so that when he turns around, he would be facing us. Okay? So we learn a few things from this hadith. One thing that we learn from this hadith is that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would finish his prayer, after he would say a few adhkar, like the ones that we mentioned so far, he wouldn't remain facing the qibla, he would turn. And we also saw that when we talked about the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, but she did not explain this part, which he's explaining, that he would turn and he would turn to his right side. And that's why the companions would love to be on the right side of the road so that they get to face Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after he finishes his salah. <clears throat> but this hadith has to be taken in context with other ahadith as well. Because some people um, focus on this hadith but they neglect other ahadith. Because in other ahadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Wasiqul Imam, Wasiqul Imam, that keep the Imam in the middle of the congregation. So what some people do is that when they come to Salah, they just go to the right side. They just go to the right side. And they don't see whether there are people on the left side or not. And that's not, not, not following the other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, because according to that, we should make the rows in such a way that they grow equally to the right and to the left. So if we come and both sides are equal, then we apply this hadith that we should prefer the right over the left. Because the Prophet ﷺ, his sunnah was to generally prefer the right over the left. Even in this hadith we see that he prefers to turn to the right rather than to the left. And that was his general sunnah. You know, when he would enter the masjid, as you all know, Hafizullah, that he would put his right foot in first. 
You know, when he would eat, he would eat with his right hand. When he would put on his shoes, he would put on his right shoe first, and so on and so forth. So he used to prefer the right side over the left. So yes, if we come and both sides have almost equal number of people, then we should prefer the right over the left. But if the right side is already very long, there's few people on the, sh on the left side, then we need to follow the other instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, which is to make sure that the Imam is in the center of each row. <coughs> Another thing that we learn from this hadith, brothers and sisters, is that the Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ would turn after the Salah and he would not remain facing the Qibla. Um, the scholars have talked about why that is. Why did he used to turn? Why wouldn't he just remain facing the Qibla? And they have mentioned a few things in this regard. One of the things that they have mentioned, one of the things, is that because in Salah he has to face the Qibla. Right? Salah is not valid unless you face the Qibla. As Allah Azza wa mentions in the Quran, You have to face the Qibla. But now that the Salah is over, he does not have to face the Qibla. And he has people behind him. And it is bad adab to have your back towards the people. So this is beautiful adab from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he turns, but he also doesn't want to put his back towards the qibla. So he turns in such a way that his right side is towards the people behind him. He's facing the people on his right side, and his left side is towards the qibla, not his back towards the qibla. So he turns in that fashion. So this is one of the beautiful uh, reasons, as the ulama had mentioned, why he would turn after he finishes the salah. And therefore they also recommend in general that anyone who leads the prayer, anyone who leads the prayer, that it is recommended for that person to also do the same thing, to turn to the right after saying those few adhkar, the ones that we have talked about, to turn to the right in such a way that the right side is towards the people, the left side is towards the qibla, and you are facing the right side of the congregation. This is the general sunnah. But they say there's an exception to this. There is one situation, they say, in which some of them, not all of the ulama, but some of them have pointed out this very, very beautiful thing. They paid attention to this. Not all the ulama paid attention to it. Some of them, paying attention to this, they said there's one exception. There's one scenario in which they said that it is better for the imam to turn the opposite way instead of facing the right side of the congregation, to face the left side of the congregation. Does anybody have any idea what that exception is? Hmm? In the Masjid al-Nabawi, Barakallahu Fiqh. Yes, that's right. If a person is leading Salah in Masjid al-Nabawi, then the Sunnah is to face the other way. Why do you think that is? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on that side. If you've been to Masjid al-Nabawi or you have the picture of it in your mind, when the Imam is facing the Qibla, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the left side. So after he turns, he turns to that side so that he doesn't have his back towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the sensitivity of our ulama as they're writing these books of fiqh in Egypt. They're still thinking of Medina. They're still thinking of Medina so that as they're writing this mas'ala, they say, except if you are in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there you should do the opposite so that you are facing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and not putting your back towards him. Now here, somebody might think of a question. Somebody might have a feeling of objection to what I just said. And the objection would be, how can you say that doing the opposite of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did is the better thing to do? How can you say that it is better to do something that is the opposite of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said and did? Isn't that the definition of a bid'ah? Somebody might have that objection. And here, we have to realize something that is very, very essential. 
there is a principle in our deen according to which the ulama say muraat al adab muqaddam ala imtithal al amr try to memorize this muraat al adab muqaddam ala imtithal al amr which means that showing adab and maintaining adab takes precedence over following the command what does that mean that doesn't sound uh, intuitive how can you say that anything is more important than following the command of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yet this is what the ulama say that showing adab to him takes precedence over following his command and they have extrapolated this a uh, principle from different ahadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam different incidents that happened in his life and i could mention 3 4 5 incidents but because of time i'll just mention one just one inshallah once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is mentioned in bukhari in sahih al bukhari once he was busy with something trying to reconcile a dispute that had occurred between some tribes in medina so he was away from his masjid and it was time for prayer and he was delayed because he was trying to solve that dispute so the sahaba in the masjid turned to abu bakr as siddiq and they said as salah as salah please lead us in salah so abu bakr turned to the muaddin and said if you call iqama i will i will lead so they called iqama and abu bakr started to lead the prayer which teaches us that if the imam is not there you wait a little bit and if he doesn't come you ask someone else to lead okay so he led uh, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu as he started to lead the prayer lo and behold what happens the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam enters salah has already started jamaa has already started the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam enters and he quietly goes and joins the first saf the sahaba notice Abu Bakr doesn't notice because he is in the front he's facing the qibla the sahaba notice the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has come and is now praying behind Abu Bakr as-Siddiq so they start to clap to get the attention of sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq so sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq was not a man who used to turn in his prayer but he realizing something is going on he kind of just turns his head a little bit and he notices with his peripheral vision Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is behind him. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to him says to him not says to him because he is now already praying the hadith says he indicates to him ashara ilayhi an imkuth that he indicates to him stay where you are. Now this is a command from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stay where you are. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq he raises his hands in dua in the middle of salah to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this favor this honor that the messenger of allah has asked him to lead him in prayer he thanks allah in the middle of salah by raising his hands and then he steps back and pushes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ahead and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam steps ahead and leads the prayer there's a lot of fiqh by the way that can be derived from all of this and you can look at what ibn hajar says in fath al-bari to if you're interested but then after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam finishes the prayer what does he say this is where it gets very important the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turns to abu bakr and he takes him to task first of all because he says to him ya abu bakr ma mana'aka an tathbuta id amartuk rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what prevented you from staying where you are when i had commanded you to stay where you are in other words how dare you disobey my command but he's not using that type of strong language he's being very more gentle than that he's saying how did why why did you disobey my command So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says ma kana li ibn Abi Quhafa an yusalli bayna yaday Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says to him it does not befit 
the son of Abu Quhafa, because his father's name is Abu Quhafa, he's an old man. It does not befit the son of Abu Quhafa to lead the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in prayer. This is not proper adab, in other words. How can I do that, Ya Rasulullah? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted that excuse from him. And then he turned to the people and he said, Why were you clapping? Clapping is for women. You should say, Subhanallah. So you see, when he saw something wrong that is not acceptable, he corrected it. But when Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu provided his excuse, it was acceptable for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So this is one example, like I said, there's many others. This is one example that the ulama used to derive this principle. مُرَاعَاتُ adab muqaddam عَلَى امْتِثَالِ الْأَمْرِ That showing adab to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes precedence over following his command. Allahu ta'ala alam. Uh, just a couple of announcements insha'Allah ta'ala. Tonight is the first night of the new Hijri year according to the uh, data of moon sighting in North America. It was the uh, 30th day of the Hijjah and tonight is the first night of Muharram, the first night of the new Hijri year. And uh, it is mentioned in some of the ahadith that the companions used to say this dua and teach this dua uh, when the new Hijri year would begin. They would say, Allahumma adkhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman, wa salamati wal islam, wa jiwarim min al shaytan, wa ridwanim min al rahman. So we say the same thing. We say, Allahumma adkhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman, wa salamati wal islam, wa jiwarim min al shaytan, wa ridwanim min al rahman. Which means, O oh Allah, please enter this new year upon us while we are in a state of security. In other words, give us security in this coming new year and maintain our faith in this coming new year and give us peace in this coming new year and maintain our Islam in this coming new year and protect us from the shaitan and uh, give us your pleasure, Ya Rahman. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, the last announcement, a reminder that tonight is also the night of Jum'ah. So let's take advantage of this day. Let's make a lot of dua, a lot of salah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.